hello today we have uh, a very interesting topic and that is what is a big bang theory so today we are going to discuss that how this universe it came into existence and how much our universe is old and what will be the future of our universe so let's start that the very first that is astronomy so astronomy is basically it is the study of the universe and the celestial bodies gaze and dust within it so we are actually studying universe and one of the branches of physics that is called astronomy in astronomy we study the behavior the existence of this universe and anything which exists inside this universe just like in this universe we have celestial bodies we have big bodies just like we have uh, stars moon galaxies we have clusters we have super clusters and so on so we study such uh you know celestial objects in astronomy now what is universe universe is actually the vast empty space around us that consists of stars solar system galaxies etc so universe is actually a very huge are uh, a very vast space uh, around us and that vast space we have stars solar system galaxies are there clusters are there super clusters are there even black holes are also exist in this universe so today we are going to discuss what is the origin of this universe the universe we are we are living what is its origin how this universe came into existence so the very first thing which i wanted to uh, tell you that this universe where we are living it is about 13.7 billion years you know old and it means that this universe came into being 13.7 billion years ago okay and at that time the universe was just inside a bubble a bubble means that the whole universe it was just a point like okay and that point like that we call a singularity it was such a very small uh, point are very small things a uh, thousand times smaller than a pinhead just imagine that how much it was smaller denser and how much it was hot one thing you should remember that that singularity i'm talking about the initial stages of our universe that singularity uh, it was so harder and denser that we cannot imagine okay so what happens after that a sudden explosion took place and that explosion we call a big bang big bang you know because of that explosion this universe here we are living it came into existence that's why that we call it a big bang okay so in big bang what happens time space and matter all begin with the big bang what we have right now we have time we have space we have matter so all these thing it began after a big bang it means that before this there was no concept of time before big bang there was no concept of we can say space and as well as there was no concept of matter so all these it began with what it began with after big bang okay so who was the founder of this big bang theory big bang theory actually it tell us you know how this universe came into existence and the founder of this theory it was two it were two sign it was two scientists 
one was George Lemaitre and Alexander Friedman they presented both of them they presented this Big Bang theory in 1920s okay in 1920s they presented this Big Bang theory and both of them they used the Einstein's theory of relativity as all of you know that Einstein uh, presented two theories one was special theory of relativity and the second one was general theory of relativity what happens in 1929 in 1929 American astronomer Edwin Hubble American astronomer Edwin Hubble he confirmed the uh, just the he confirmed that Big Bang theory it's uh, we can say it's real because according to the Big Bang theory So American astronomer in 1929 Edwin Hubble he confirmed this Big Bang theory because according to this Big Bang theory the universe is expanding at a tremendous rate because it was at initial a point like a sudden explosion tax or took place and slowly and gradually the universe it is just you know expanding after that event okay and when that event took place that event took place 13.7 billion years ago just imagine this universe it came into existence 13.7 13 billion years ago so here in 1929 American astronomer Edward Hubble confirmed how he confirmed he said that all the clusters they are just moving away from each other why because the universe is expanding and because of its uh, this expansion you know all the clusters they are just moving away from each other so it was a proof that the universe is expanding so at initial stages universe was a space past okay first it was a space and give and then it give birth to particles galaxies stars and you know uh, dust even you and finally me okay so it was just like this if you study the holy quran so in the holy quran it also confirmed the you know the phenomena which we are studying in a big bang theory so it also confirmed and chapter number 51 in Holy Quran verse 47 it says and it is we Allah God who have built the universe with our creative power and verily it is we Allah who are steadily expanding it so it is mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago and now the scientists after 1400 years ago after 1400 years now they are saying that the universe is expanding holy quran mentioned this 1400 years ago almighty allah says that allah has created this universe and he is expanding this okay so the thing which now the scientists are just hundred years ago the scientists are claiming you know it is already mentioned in the holy quran 1400 years ago it means that the holy quran it is crystal clear okay so what happens actually at the time of big bang in a fraction of second the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy okay so at initial uh, time at the time of expansion the universe in a fraction of second the universe grew from smaller yes the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy okay so the universe it was you know it slowly and gradually it was expanding when the universe was just one second old you should remember this that when the universe was just one second old stable particles just like neutrons and protons start to form okay stable particles we have protons and neutrons which start formation so 
So at initial stages, when the universe was just one second old, okay, I'm talking this about after the Big Bang. When the Big Bang took place, what happens after one second, we have different types of particles. So at that time, neutron and protons, you know, they were stable particle and they start formation, okay? Over next three minutes, after Big Bang, over next three minutes, temperature dropped below 1 billion degrees Celsius. As I said that, you know, at the point of singularity, it was very, very hotter, okay? And as well as it was denser. So as the universe was expanding, its density was also becoming low, okay? Decreasing, its density was also decreasing, as well as its you know, it was also, because of expansion, the temperature was also dropping. And over next three minutes after the Big Bang, the temperature dropped below 1 billion degrees Celsius. Just imagine that within three minutes after Big Bang, temperature drops, dropped by 1 billion degrees Celsius. And what happens? Neutron and protons, they get combined, you know, and we got hydrogen as well as after that we got helium nuclei or atoms. So after 300 years, okay, what happens after 300 years, temperature decreased by 3000 degrees, understand. And now, now nuclei at that time, after 300 years, thousand years after 300,000 years temperature decreased by how much 3,000 degrees and at that time nuclei they were good able to catch electron okay and it started the formation of atom because an atom we have nucleus and as well as we have electron so it made it makes what? It makes an atom. So after 300,000 years, temperature reduced by 3,000 degrees. Nuclei for nuclei capture electron and it made an it made uh, what? Atoms. So at the time you should remember this. At that time, we have two kinds of matter. One is called ordinary matter and one is antimatter. Antimatter, it is a strange kind of matter, okay? Matter, just like in matter, we have electron, protons, and neutrons. So in antimatter, we have anti-electron, anti-protons, and anti-neutrons. So now you should remember this, that when electron plus positron, I mean to say, when electron and positron, matter and antimatter, they get combined. It gives us power energy. And this is called inhalation of matter. Inhalation of matter. So, scientists, they are thinking that at that time, at the time of Big Bang, there were antimatter, okay, in early stage of the universe. And antimatter is, you know, not obeying the law, conservation law of momentum. It does not obey the conservation law of energy and, you know, casualty. And as well as it also does not uh, uh, obey the single uh, unidirectional time arrow. So, antimatter, it's really a strange kind of matter. And still, we don't know uh, enough uh, about the uh, dark matter, okay? Uh, sorry, antimatter. So, uh, at that time, the scientists, they are just predicting this, that at that time, you know, the antimatter, it's, uh, you know, uh, they were just rippling each other, pushing each other, and because they were pushing each other, what happens? There is a kind of, we can say, explosion take, uh, took place, and that explosion is called a Big Bang, okay? And because of that explosion, so uh, the universe came into existence. So they are considering this, that this universe came into being, and the explosion took place because of that antimatter. So, you should remember that at the beginning, if the matter and antimatter, if they were equal, 
So how this universe came into being? So you should remember this. If there is one matter particle, one antimatter particle, at the end we will just get energy. So how this universe came into being? So you should remember this, that in one billion, in one billion matter particles, for example, if we have one billion electrons, okay, and one billion, what? Positron, antimatter particle, and one billion matter antimatter particle there is one extra matter particle there is all one extra and because of that one extra matter particle this universe came into existence so after that for stars form you know from the dust gaze there were after the explosion uh, after the big bang there were you know dust particles and this is not just like ordinary dust dust particles are such particles you know, which have uh, uh, both positive dust particles, we have negative dust particles, and those dust particles uh, at the beginning, you know, that just get, combines because of the gravitational force, and it makes what? It makes stars, okay? So, uh, at the beginning, when a star, star, what is a star? Star is actually uh, a fusion reaction generator. Our sun, it is also a star, and it is also a fusion reaction generator. And there is uh, a lifetime of uh, a star as well. Just like we have a life cycle, star is also have a life cycle, okay? And when uh, a star, a star, what happens inside a star? In a star, we have hydrogen, okay? Enough hydrogen is there in stars. So when uh, those hydrogen uh, particles, when they get combined, so it makes what helium, okay? And that helium is actually responsible for the light and heat, heat which we are receiving from our sun and other stars. So this fusion reaction takes place in stars, okay? So what happens? One day, this fusion reaction, it will stop. And at that time, a super, uh, you know, a huge explosion will take place. And that explosion is called supernova explosion. So now you should remember that at the end of, uh, in the, at the end of, you know, uh, life of a star, what happens when a supernova takes place? And if the mass of a star is at least three to four times the mass of a sun, so this star, this, you know, this star, it will convert into a black hole. What is a black hole? A black hole is such uh, a region in a space which has a super duper gravity. I mean to say that black hole has such a, a strong gravity that even light cannot escape from its gravitational force. Black hole is, uh, we can say, that the center of a black hole is called singularity. And that center of a black hole, you know, here the density is infinite because the volume is almost equal to zero. In a very small space, a very huge volume is occupied. And that place is called singularity that we call the center of a black hole. Around a black hole, we have a region that is called event horizon. Event horizon, it is uh, a region around a black hole and that is also called a point of no return once you enter to this place no chances that you will just come back from this event horizon you know Stephen Hawking he has uh, a lot of uh, research on uh, black holes and you can get uh, we can get many advantages from his uh, observations regarding black hole studies okay so it was uh, a black hole and it is also predicted that at the center of every galaxy we have a super black holes and common black hole we call it a stellar black hole stellar black hole is uh, a black hole which has a mass 20 times more than the mass of our sun so now it was all about the Big Bang Theory. So what are the evidences through which we can confirm the Big Bang Theory? One is called red ship and one is called blue ship. What is red ship? Red ship is, it is the shift in the uh, light's wavelength which we observe that when, uh, you know, a star, it is uh, moving away from Earth. So we observe red shift, okay? And when a star is moving towards the Earth, so we observe a blue shift. 
Similarly, we can also uh, confirm the uh, this theory. Uh, uh, we, uh, we can also confirm this uh, Big Bang theory from cosmic microwave background radiation. So, cosmic microwave background radiations are those remnants. You know, which uh, just uh, left over after the Big Bang, uh, after that huge explosion. So it was all about the Big Bang theory and how this universe came into existence. I hope you might have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you all.